Hello class, um, I wanted to provide you some um, background and information on some um, skills that you need as a graduate student. Uh, so in this particular presentation, I'm going to be talking about critical thinking, scholarly sources, <clears throat> academic tome, and bias-free writing. All of these things are really crucial for graduate students and for um, success in my courses. So uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is practicing critical thinking. Um, so why is critical thinking important? It's important because it's uh, a really good cognitive skill for you to have. Um, it helps you consider different diverse perspectives on a topic. Uh, it's relevant because critical thinking has implications beyond the classroom. It helps you identify problems and find solutions, and that's going to be a critical skill set um, in the workplace um, and in uh, the classroom. And it's significant because critical thinkers are open to new information. They use um, things like reasoning and logic to gather and assess information, and they use evidence to support their perspectives. So if you've had me in a class previously, you've probably seen this um, little chart of um, characteristics of critical thinking. And so the first one on the top of my list and critical thinking, again, this is my, my list of characteristics for critical thinking. Um, on the top of that list is skepticism. So critical thinkers question things until they know it is valid. They don't accept information at face valid. They take that step to go forward to find more, more information to make sure it is valid. <clears throat> They're open-minded. Critical thinkers are open to new information and new ways of seeing things. Um, they're open to seeing the world in different ways. They're fair-minded. Critical thinkers are unprejudiced, they're just, and they're focused on truth. Um, critical thinkers uh, use evidence-based information. They want to use scientific or empirical evidence to make decisions. Um, critical thinkers use reasoning. Uh, they use sound logic and examine information objectively. Critical thinkers focus on clarity. They're clear in communicating ideas, thoughts, reasoning, and evidence. And so I want to expand a little here on the clarity. Um, that is why APA follows a very specific format for their papers um, because it, it provides a very clear way of sharing thoughts and ideas and reasoning and evidence with a reader. Um, so try to connect that clarity piece of critical thinking to the APA style guidelines. Critical thinkers are also precise. They are focused and exact. They also are focused on relevance. Um, critical thinkers are focused on information that is logically related to the topic that you're discussing. They're also focused on accuracy. They seek out information that is factual and accurate. They are also fo uh, focused on rationality. They approach problems in a purposeful, logical way. And finally, they use logic. They use logic to evaluate arguments and reasoning. And so it's important as you're, whether you are uh, completing a discussion post, you're reading course learning material, you're um, doing a more substantive written assignment, that you should practice critical thinking and assessment skills. And I encourage you to use critical thinking when you're assessing the information uh, shared with you in the, in the course, whether that be in a textbook, uh, notes, in um, any articles that are shared. Use your critical thinking skills to assess information for, um, for validity, for accuracy. Next, scholarly sources. So this is uh, something you're likely to receive and feedback from me on papers. The importance of using scholarly sources at the graduate level. How do you know that a source is um, scholarly? <clears throat> and why is it important? So it is important because scholarly sources, it lends relevance to your work due to the authority and credibility of the source that you're using. Uh, and a discipline's knowledge is built upon the work that comes before. So um, your work is going to 
stand upon the shoulders of those that come before you and situating that appropriately is important. So scholarly sources are written by scholars, researcher, researchers, or other experts in the field. They're peer reviewed and they go through a peer reviewed publication process. Um, that normally, just to give you a little information about peer review, for example, if I did some research and I wanted to share my findings in an article in a journal, a peer reviewed journal, I would submit my article to the journal and then it would go through uh, this peer reviewed process where some experts in the field, my peers in the field, would review it for credibility, validity, um, scholarship before it's published in that journal. <clears throat> Scholarly sources are extensively referenced and they're situated in the literature on the topic. The audience for scholarly sources are other experts and scholars in the field. So examples of scholarly sources include peer-reviewed academic journal articles and some books. And not all books would be um, scholarly. So what is a credible or popular source? So they're not written by experts in the field. They're not peer-reviewed. There's generally no reference list. And the audience is the general public. And so Examples of popular, popular sources include newspapers, magazines, blogs, websites. Uh, does this mean you can never use credible or popular sources? No, it means that scholarly sources, specifically peer-reviewed journal articles, should be the standard for um, supporting your work in my courses. You can use other sources, other popular sources. They just not, they should not be the majority of um, the sources you're using to support your work. So you're also probably going to hear from me about the importance of academic tone. And so your academic tone um, uses a more formal language in your writing. And um, so just to be upfront with you, I am one of those instructors. When you're submitting a paper, I expect you to use a scholarly academic tone and I follow a more formal approach to writing at the graduate level than you may have experienced elsewhere or maybe experience in your undergrad degree if you're um, a new graduate student. So why is it important? Academic tone kind of situates your work in the broader literature on the field. It clarifies the purpose uh, of the work, which is to summarize, analyze, synthesize, and evaluate. Why is it relevant? It demonstrates your credibility. It establishes the, in the intent of the writer. So if your tone is academic, it is clear um, that you're approaching things from a scholarly, scientific, empirical um, approach. And it impacts the reader's perceptions of the writing. If you use informal language, um, jargon, things like that, it weakens the argument in your writing. Why is it significant? Academic tone is, is always neutral. You're using evidence, you're using those critical thinking skills to um, write about a topic. It also establishes your, as the writer, your attitude toward the topic. And it determines your level of expertise. As a graduate student, you're becoming an expert in your field. Um, you're, you're becoming a, a scholar practitioner. So um, academic tone is very important. It is also, academic tone is connected to things like APA style, using a very uh, specific academic uh, principles in your writing. All of those are very important at the graduate level. So uh, academic tone is also connected to my final topic, which is bias-free writing. Um, and so why is bias-free writing important? Because it stresses the need to discuss people with all people with respect inclusive, and inclusivity. Um, it protects against reinforcing stereotypes. Why is it relevant? It avoids prejudice in writing. It protects against demeaning attitudes in writing. Uh, why is it significant? It describes the individuals at the appropriate level of specificity, and it shows sensitivity to labeling. So, uh, bias-free writing is something I expect that um, if you're not very good at removing bias from your writing, 
I expect that you're going to follow my feedback and help incorporate that um, into your writing. You can learn more about bias free writing in the APA uh, styles website. Uh, there's a specific section about bias free writing, but it is important to me and it should be important to you as a graduate student that you treat all groups with respect, that you remove your personal biases or unfounded opinions from your writing and that you use evidence and logic and reasoning to approach a subject. So I just wanted to share these thoughts with you and let you know that this is an important element in my courses. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me uh, and we can discuss it. If you have questions, you need a little more explanation, you want to understand better how to approach uh, academic writing, just shoot me an email. Thanks.